Hello, my name is Steve Simpson, and I'm a Salesforce Certified Technical Architect and Architect Instructor. And I share my architect insights on the Steve TechArc YouTube channel and website. This is in my integration series, and this video is the JSON Jamboree. When you're making Apex callouts and you're getting the return, should we return value in JSON? Should we be parsing that using fixed JSON, which I'll demonstrate, or dynamic JSON, which allows you to be more flexible. So it's the JSON Jamboree, and I have some code that I'm gonna be taking you through. Now, as an example, I'm gonna be making web service callouts to an open source API, and I enjoy the OpenSky network because it allows me to make calls against tele flight telemetry. So you can all find this at OpenSky network, and what I'm going to demonstrate is they have a couple of different API calls that we're going to call from within Salesforce. So the first one we're going to be looking at is going to be looking at arrivals by airport. And you'll notice that in this API call with the get flights arrival, we can then pass in an ICO identifier, a beginning and end Unix time, and get back planes that are actually landing at certain airports. And what we're gonna be doing is this is real-time data. So I'm calling the Open Sky Network. And here, in this particular case, I have some timestamps. And I'm gonna hit send. And now I'm seeing flights that are landing in the EDDF airport. We can take a look at this. And we can see, if I Google EDDF, this is the Frankfurt Airport airport code. And I can go ahead and make this API call, open sky send, and get this, these data back. So this is a JSON list of a particular airplane. So this is the date timestamp. This is the, the call sign and information about the flight telemetry. Now what I wanna do is to be able to call this data from within inside my Salesforce org. So what I'm gonna do is I'm inside here. This is an org that I've been writing code and I'm gonna to go to setup and I'm gonna to go to the developer console and I'm gonna go, we're gonna do a quick debug, execute anonymous. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be calling a class I wrote called the OS flight service, get arrivals by airport and we're gonna pass in the EDDF. So this is gonna make a call right now, execute highlight And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the debug information and you'll see that I'm hitting an open sky endpoint. I'm actually getting the 200 response and you'll see the call signs of these planes coming back. And it's giving me the call signs for planes that are landing. In this particular case, I found 3,873 records for all the data for flights landing in um, this airport. We're gonna go is we're gonna take a look at that code. So this is going to be the flight status service. Here is Visual Studio Code for the flight status service. And I have this class right here that extends a base service and I'll be walking you through that. And it has the begin time and end times. And we're gonna do the get arrival by airport method, which will then pass in the flights arrival and we saw that with the Open Sky Network, flights arrival, there's flight departure, and we also have flight arrival, get tracks, and flights arrival. There's the get flights arrival. We're gonna pass in the airport, the beginning, the end time, and we're gonna be getting the response as a JSON array of flights. Now, I'm gonna have this, well, this is a method called get flight request. And I'm gonna be demonstrating, in, in another call we'll be going to the details about making the request, getting the response. But what we're here to talk about is the parsing of the payload. So we have a, a successful 200 that has come back on line 84. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be calling OS flight model. So this will be the fixed JSON. So we're gonna to go to this class called OS Flight Model and you'll see in one line of code, parse, it will retrieve the payload and parse it. 
So we're gonna go to the flight status model. And what we have right now is this is an apex class that is holding the structure for the return value. So if we come back to here, what we're gonna be looking at is the response is the flights. And what I got right here is in the spec, it will tell me the data returned. And you'll see that inside of the postman. Ike, we have the ICAO 24 first scene, last scene. This is the exact structure of the data coming back for a single value. And this is an array of them. And what I've done in Salesforce is I've created a class that represents the exact names of these. So this is an apex class that is an exact structure and using a single line of code, I can deserialize that JSON string into this array. So this is fixed JSON. Create an exact match character for character with the fields and then you get a single line deserialization command which you'll notice is found right here in this parse command. Now I take my return list and I'm just looping through and debugging. So as I showed you in here, we have all of the returns are just being returned to there through the single debug statement. So that is the power of the parse statement, which is our ability to just um, use a single line parse and bring it back. This gives us a lot of power. It is having a flight model that matches perfectly, a single line parse, and your ability to parse that with a single line of code, and then iterate as you can be. This is very powerful when you have JSON that is not changing, coming in from an external service, and JSON that is in a very straightforward structure. Um, what I want to show you is there are cases where you might run into a more advanced structure. So if we go and take a look at a different call, we're going to be looking at get states all. These are actually pulling me flight telemetry of planes in the air. And it's given this in an array. So this, if you'll notice, this is an array of values that does not equally match the previous one. In the previous one, we were getting a very clean JSON, which had field value, field values, and I was able to parse that. But because the second one is coming in an array of states, in order to do this, I needed to shift to what we'll call um, dynamic JSON parsing. And in this particular case, we're gonna do get states all. So we're gonna go and do a get state service. I'm gonna comment out and run this first one. Get all, execute highlighted. And you'll notice that I'm skipping the first 10 records and I'm actually getting the call signs and barrow altitudes of these planes in flight. Now let's take a look at that code. So if we come here, the get state service, what we're gonna do is we're calling the get all, which is calling the get state request. And we're gonna be making the request, getting the response. Now in this case, we're calling, we, we're not gonna go into the details of the apex call. That'll be in a, another uh, one of these videos, but we're focusing on the parsing. We're gonna be calling the OS state parser. So we need more advanced parsing. So here I have a state model, which has the structure I'm looking for but I can't use a single line deserialize because this is coming in in an indexed array. And so what I'm gonna do is in the state service, I am going to have a class called the state model parser. And what we're gonna be doing is if we take a look at the, the postman, this came into a structure where it has time at the top states in an array, so it's a multi-tiered top-level JSON, then states, and then an array. And so in this situation, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna parse this with code. So I'm going to come into this, I'm gonna create a JSON parser right here, and so let's start at the top of our code. We are doing a parse method. We're gonna create a response model. So here is my state response model. It has two classes, the response time and a list of the states. What we're then gonna do is go to the state 
service. And we're going to call the parser and we can do a page offset, which we could talk about in the subsequent sessions, but we're going to talk about the, um, the parsing. Now, what I want to show you is you're going to get the JSON string here in line 38. We're going to then create a JSON parser in 46. And we have to follow the dynamic methods for navigating through the token. So and this is a situation where I have to do get next token, then get the text and then check to see that I haven't reached the end. And so what I'm demonstrating is there are more lines of code. If I encounter the time, which I showed you right here is this first time field, I can read its integer value. If I come into the array of states, which you can see right there, then what I do is I have a parsing state list. And here I'm doing a sub loop through the uh, parser next tokens. But in this case, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be parsing a state item. And I'm gonna show that to you. So here, I'm gonna be looping through the parser array and based on its position, position zero, I'm gonna map the values. So you'll notice that I have hard coding here. What I'm ending up with is positional co code that is very strict. So if I need to add another parameter, I have to change my code. And in this case, you'll see I have the ICAO, the call sign, the origin country, time position, and this skips the 12 and gets the geo altitude, the squawk, and the position source and category. So this code is going to be fixed in time and potentially fragile if it needs to change over time. But I can see that debug, execute anonymous, and we're going to get the state service and execute. And as I'm showing you, it, it's working beautiful. So this is mapping all the values using the state service. However, it has a fixed JSON with a dynamic parser. The downside is if you find that your fields are gonna change, you might have to be continually changing code. So I'm gonna show you a new approach. We're shifting from fixed JSON to fixed JSON with a single line deserializer to fixed JSON with a dynamic serializ uh, serialization. And now we're gonna add a new curve. We're gonna come in here and in Salesforce, I've created some, I've created a custom object, OS state. Let's do the state, which has the same fields as my model, call sign, barrel altitude. So this is my S object, but I've created something else. In addition to this, I've created custom metadata. So this custom metadata is a mapping, which is gonna show me my JSON field and my API name of my S object and its position and its data type. So this is actually allowing me to have dynamic mapping using custom metadata. So let's take a look at that in action. So we're gonna go debug, execute anonymous, and we're gonna go and use the service where we're calling the object state service using the nest object. So we're gonna execute. And you'll notice now these debug statements have the custom fields, underscore C's, the call sign, the ICAO, the origin country, Thailand or Germany. So this is all using S objects and running with the dynamic mapping using custom metadata. Let's take a look at how that's working. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the state S object service, which is gonna go get the state request. It's going to then call the state S object model parser. And it has the same top level parsing um, for certain fields such as the time 
and the states. These stay the same. I still have to do my dynamic parsing. But when I get to the actual parsing states, I want to show you that I now have an array of a list of the state MDDTs, the custom metadata. Then I'm loading all the values up of the custom metadata with one single line of code. And then down here, I am actually, when I'm parsing the state list, I have the same parsing for end of array, but then what I'm gonna do is I am going to then parse the state item down in this code. But there is a neat little trick here. I am looking at my state map, and then I'm looking for one that matches by position. And once I get it, I'm gonna use a little trick of dynamic field mapping on S objects, where I can take the API name and I can do a put value. So if it's of type text, then I'm gonna read the current posi in position and put it in to that field, if it's integer, if it's double or Boolean. So these four lines of code are reading my custom metadata. It's reading what field, what position to look for, and then read the value of that value of that field and place it into a dynamic dynamically into a field on the s object so this works beautiful and the power of this is that i can add or remove any of these um, let's take an example where we're going to take a look and make this iCal go away so we're going to go delete the iCal. so the mapping is now gone we're going to go debug execute anonymous we're going to execute and you should see that no longer appear in my debug statement. There it is, it's gone. So we have removed, now let's add it back. So what we can do is we can then come in here and go to the new, and what we need is the field, which is the iCal, and go to my custom metadata, the API name, CAO 24, we're gonna put this here, 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 and it's position zero, and it was a text. So we're gonna save, and now we're gonna run this again. Debug, execute anonymous, and execute. And you'll see my iCow is back. So what we have right here is dynamic mapping using custom metadata into an S object. This allows me to be able to map this dynamically. So to summarize, if you're reading data in a very straightforward JSON structure that doesn't change, you can create an Apex class, you can do a single line JSON mapping, and the data will come in with the single line deserialization. Now, if you get more advanced structures, you're gonna to need to do the parser next tokens. But if you find yourself reading values and you worry about having being able to add them on later without having to change your code, you could implement a dynamic JSON solution, one that I demonstrated using something like custom metadata and then using the dynamic putters on the S objects. So that way you could be deployed in production and actually change your field mappings. So these are very powerful constructs. The simplicity of fixed JSON moving to the, pow the, com the, the complexity but power of dynamic JSON. Hope this video was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching. May your code compile and the bugs scatter away. And if you like this, make sure you subscribe and see you on future videos.